Welcome to one last regular season night in NISA for the 2022 season. We're at Barnabo Stadium in Romeo, Michigan to watch the Michigan Stars face Chattanooga FC on 11 Sports. Evening, everybody. Mason Lowry, Chris Black, great to have you along. There's not much at stake tonight, quite frankly. The playoff spots are set. The seeds are locked in for the NISA postseason, which begins next week, which is why it's maybe a little bit of a surprise or a lot of a surprise that Chattanooga has come out really with a full strength lineup. Well, I think you just saw what is at stake and that's what Shawbod was doing right there. He's paying attention to his dynamic movements because it's really injuries, right? And that is what Michigan Stars looks like. Hey, they're paying attention to two things more than likely. It's making sure they clear the deck of possible injuries for a lot of their players. In this game, of the, the other side too though for them is they should have a lot of hungry guys on the field today that are playing for more time in the postseason quite possibly. Maybe playing for staying on the team next year bigger role in the team next year or moving elsewhere so it's almost a career game for some of these guys as well so that's the exciting thing from that side Chattanooga like you said I mean they're, they're coming out swinging it looks like they're, they're playing the, what looks to be a very very heavy competitive starting lineup today so the question with them is going to be what do they try and get out of it maybe they want to get off on the right foot maybe they don't want to see another 0-0 tie here between <laughs> the two teams <laughs> whatever it is they're going after it a bit so the question there is will they use that seven player bench quick is it a quick hook? Maybe there's a couple guys are taking their eye on right now to say, okay, uh, let's be careful with these guys, but maybe we need to get in a little bit of a run uh, and get things going heading into the postseason. I know I'd like to see a goal or two for sure. Let's take you through the teams, and we're looking at Michigan Stars right now, and we're looking at a very different starting lineup. Paul Lewis, the backup goalkeeper, he gets the start to tend to McCruva, not involved at all tonight. Harry Nevins makes his first start. There's Harry from London former Southampton FC Academy player Robert Yunchai starts. Steven does not, though, is available on the bench. Cyrus Tran, Nemanja Vazdic, Andres Shalbot, Kayo, whom we haven't seen in the starting lineup in a little bit. Matt Constant will captain the team at center back. Anthony Bowie is in. Darren Rios, his first start in a while as well. Alexander Frank makes up the final member of the starting 11. And for Chattanooga, well, if you're a CFC fan, it's a lot of names that you recognize. Kevin Gonzalez in goal. Tate Robertson, Frankie Martinez, Colin Stripling, and Greg Stratton across the back four. Midfield three of Ian Saro, the captain, Richard Dixon, and Alex James, who has scored once this season. And a front three that is anchored by the golden boot winner, of course he will be, Marcus Nagelstad. Five more goals than Aliun Diacate of Albion San Diego with Taylor Gray wide on the left and Brett Jones wide on the right. We've seen 170, uh, 270 minutes of soccer between these two teams this season. Haven't seen any goals. Hope that changes this evening. And as you alluded to, it's certainly a Chattanooga FC starting 11 built to change that possibly pretty quickly. Although if you recall, when Chattanooga came here last month, Marcus Nagelstad got very few touches, didn't really threaten. CFC didn't really threaten at all. Michigan Stars had one goal disallowed for a handball from Stephen Elias, who is also available on the bench tonight for the Stars. And I feel like you were just trolling me the whole way up talking about Nagelstad last time. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and he never got on that score line. But obviously he, he had a longer drive home than I did after not scoring. I'm sure that was a little bit uh, more difficult on him than it was on me. was a little hold up for a little bit there just checking the goals shifting them slightly making sure they're counterweighted and balanced they're taking care of that I think we're okay now Carter Brochu is our referee the assistant referees Samuel Pizzamenti and Nicholas Balser the fourth official Jamie Crosby Michigan Stars in all white Chattanooga FC in Navy Two of the form teams in the league playing on the final night of the NISA regular season. And away we go. It'll be especially interesting to my eye to see how this Michigan Stars team actually lines up tactically. It's a lot of guys that really aren't accustomed to playing with one another. Dixon heads that in field. And an early free kick for CFC. Cyrus Tran up top by himself, perhaps. Not exactly the uh, 
height that we're used to seeing from a target forward for Michigan Stars. Usually it's Leon Marich at six foot five, Cyrus about five foot eight. Yeah, it was interesting. We talked before we went on air is who is going to be playing up top for this Michigan Stars team, and uh, you look through their their number of players. I mean, maybe it's going to be a little bit of a rotation. There are a lot of interchangeable parts because, um, uh, as you said, they don't have that typical big tall striker like they've had in the other games. So be interesting we'll see Tran run up top for a while and then do they do they rotate through a little bit or stay static with him being the lone striker up top Anthony Bowie seemingly in an advanced midfield role four two three one from the looks of it Nagelstad peeled over to the right for Chattanooga thrown will be taken by Brett Jones and quickly they've made their way into the box and Michigan Stars able to deal with it. This is a Stars team that hasn't conceded in six games. Here comes Darren Rios, the Puerto Rican international, up the left. See if he can dig out a cross to him at either Vazdic or Cyrus Tran. Alexander Frank was arriving late. This is Vazdic trying to shake loose for the shot, and he's buried into the near post. Oh, how do you like that? The Stars B team, essentially the starting lineup tonight. Vosdich begins it with a bang. Michigan Stars one, Chattanooga nil. And you think about the negative possibilities for a Chattanooga team coming out with more of their typical starting lineup. This is one of them, right? You, maybe you're trying to go into the post team with a strong showing and now you have to get over the fact you just gave up a goal within the first two minutes against the Stars. So it's gut check time now for Chattanooga FC. First professional goal for Nemanja Vazdic and to have it come against Chattanooga FC, final night of the regular season. You're maybe playing with a spot in the starting lineup in the postseason on the line. That was something special, that's for sure. Of course, it could be that the Stars have merely irritated Chattanooga <laughs> FC. And this is a lineup full of heavy hitters, especially Marcus Nagelstad, 18 goals this year. And Vazdic, who has to be playing with all the confidence in the world, picks it up on the right. Here's Tran looking for the run of Vazdic. That will just curl out of play. That was good for Vazdic. He didn't big time him. Hey, play my feet, man. Come on. I got a goal today. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously a little bit of a crowd on the field. Anyways, turf field, often used for American football, that pointy ball sport that's so silly. But at this point, those balls that go wide do tend to just track out a little bit faster. So if you're trying to find the width, it's going to have to be a lot tighter to people's feet. Pointy ball sport that's so silly. <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming that no one even thought of that sport today <laughs> in the United States. Brett Jones has pace cutting in from the right. He and Nagelstad will maybe try and answer immediately. Nagelstad's shot is blocked by the captain, Matt Constant. Taylor Gray will pick this up. Number three is Greg Stratton. Played collegiately at Missouri State. Has a couple of goals scored this year. It's Frankie Martinez. And Stripling, the other center back. Eight unbeaten for Chattanooga since a surprising 3-0 loss to Syracuse. Four wins, four draws since then. They've beaten Albion twice. LA Force and Flower City Union once. Here's Grafe. He can get down the line. Leaves Robert Yunchai in the dust. That's allowed to drop at the back post. And that's the risk you run when you have such a changed team. You're maybe expecting to hear certain voices. To tend to Makruva, we know somebody that has no problem making himself heard. And guys like Vasilios Zogos, he's not involved this evening at all. Yakov Shmelov can come off the bench. Yeah, in that situation, had Paul Lewis maybe was expected by others to come off that ball. Obviously, we couldn't hear what was said all the way out in the field in that situation, but you know, from, from our area, we thought, yeah, he'd probably come out and get that, but at the same point, defender was there, he's ready for that ball, and they've got to sort that out themselves. Play that ball unless they're called off.
first couple of matches between these two sides, Michigan Stars were content to sit back, absorb a lot of pressure. There's been a change the back third of the season where they have pressed a little bit higher. They've played with a bit more of a sense of urgency, and it has really paid off for them. Coming off of a 2-0 win on Monday afternoon at Flower City Union. Goals from Basilio Zogos on a penalty and Leon Marich wrapping it up in the 80th minute. The Michigan Stars bench in full. Stephen Elias, Jonathan Firmino, Stephen Yunchai, Leon Marich, Elias McLeod, Kyle Nelson, Nicholas Pacheni, Yakov Shmelov, and Ramius Steeler, the backup keeper. That's back with Dixon for Chattanooga, their bench. Chris Bermudez, Luke Ferreira, Roddy Green, Ethan Corrin, Alec Reddington, the backup keeper, Damian Rodriguez, and Nick Spielman. Roddy Green wouldn't mind scoring in Southeast Michigan again, former Detroit City FC player. Here's Nagelstad, dragged down a yard or two outside the 18 and a free kick in a threatening area for CFC. That's the first time I can recall from the last Chattanooga-Michigan Stars match here in the first seven minutes of this one that he has showed off that little bit of explosiveness. The Stars really didn't give him an inch last time. And they're going to need it today. At this point, chasing the game a little bit. Obviously, the set piece can get him back into it right now, but you need that, that explosiveness like you're talking about. Take advantage of the back line. Being a little bit mismatched today. Nagelstad steps up, that's into the wall. Can't take a second crack at it, it was poked away by Kayo. Kayo's got one goal this year, that was against Bay Cities. At the other place, at the Michigan Star Sports Center, in fact the first goal scored there was by him. Highest scoring team in the league, Chattanooga, 41 scored. Helps to have a guy like Nagelstad who doesn't need too many chances to find the back of the net. Another free kick here for CFC. And anyone that can score three goals in two minutes at any level, <laughs> rather, whether it's indoor, <laughs> indoor co-ed, playing against your, your kid's team at the father-son game or, or NCAA, that's still impressive. That was while he was at Providence College, set an NCAA record for quickest hat trick. Jones arriving under that ball. And that's a throw in to Michigan Stars. An absolute banger from Nemanja Vazdic in the second minute, putting the Stars on the board first. We saw 270 minutes of scoreless soccer between these two. The first three matches only had to wait two minutes in meeting number four for somebody to finally find the back of the net. Stars throw in up into the midfield. Three wins and two draws in the Stars' last five. As we've said, they have not conceded a goal in that time. That's good pressure again by the Stars. Bob back to Colin Stripling. USL League One veteran with FC Tucson and Greenville Triumph where he won the league title in 2020. That'll drop for Alex James. Another good foot in by the Stars, and they have the free kick. Both teams in playoff mode. In Chattanooga, you don't know quite who you're playing yet. Michigan Stars, they do. They'll play a quarterfinal match 
against the number six seed Syracuse Pulse next Friday. Seven o'clock kickoff. We'll have it for you here on 11. The Stars won by forfeit in the home opener, what would have been the home opener, so credited with a 3-0 win. They drew 2-2 on May 14th with the opening goal in that game coming from Matty Cornish, who was on ESPN2 this morning playing for Blythe Spartans in the English 6th Division. In fact, he won the free kick that Blythe Spartans scored that earned them a 1-1 draw against Mighty Wrexham. Certainly the best-known team in the National League, the 5th Division of English Soccer, thanks to Robin Ryan. If you haven't watched Welcome to Wrexham yet, it's definitely worth the subscription to either Disney Plus or Hulu, by the way. And this was today, that was a spoiler alert for next year's season, by the way. You just That's true. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of the FA Cup, that means a replay on Tuesday, which I'm hoping will also air on American television. I know what I'll be doing Tuesday afternoon. That and getting my notes ready on Syracuse Pulse, updating the notes I made for that match back in May. A lot of it's different now, I would imagine. A roster turnover between both teams. Martinez inching forward, finds Taylor Gray on the left. Gray with a chance to cut in. A little over hit, looking for Nagelstadt, cleared away by the Stars. That's a neat touch from Tran. Knocking it around well. Vazdic had to check his run. Hand drifted into an offside position, needed to come back. The role of Anthony Bowie is interesting to me because here's a guy, Chris, that can do so much. We've seen him often this year playing as either a right or left back. He can play further upfield. He can sit in midfield and spread balls around. There aren't too many players that you'll see who are as much of a Swiss Army knife as he is. Yeah, yeah usually you're just, you're just hopeful that uh, the right-sided player can also play on the left side of the field. Now you're getting some central play up the field and attack as well. I mean, this attitude of the, the outside backs has really always been in the attack anyways as it was. Um, so it's not a shock, I guess, the attitude's there to go for, but now it's going to be how they can possess in the midfield. And so far, the combi combinations in the midfield have been almost better than normal uh, for the Michigan Stars team so far, really finding each other's feet, getting that ball forward. And of course, sometimes buoy out wide then for the long throw, which you may see as well. Played to the feet of Tran. Here's Frank. Vosdich, the goal scorer on the right. Don't really have that big target to aim out of the box. Cross is a little over hit. Rios had gotten to the back stick. And Chattanooga on a counterattack. Snuffed out by the captain, Constant. And here's Rios who can run at them now. He'll go at the captain, Dixon. There's the cross. Nobody there to get on the end of it for the Stars. And Chattanooga has a throw in. We've seen some good stuff from Michigan Stars thus far. They're not really a team that is built to knock the ball around and try and build slowly. They can do that, but when we talk about that sense of urgency in the attack, it's quick little touches and then go. Yeah, it's not really reserved or, or recycle it. Could they do that? Maybe, but that hasn't been in the cards for the most part. And today it seems like it's... It's get forward in a hurry. However, they are still building to do that. It's still some negative balls here or there, but it's always with an idea to get that ball back and higher up the field very quickly. Which really probably does fit the personality and, and also the, the imposing nature size-wise of this group instead of looking for Marich up top in the air. You're going to need to play a little bit faster to feet before space really gets eaten up. Nothing on for Cerro, has to go backwards. It's returned to him by Dixon. That's Robertson. That's a lovely ball through for Nagelstad who scores! That's an absolute peach of a ball to release the league's top scorer and it's 1-1 on 16 minutes. 
And really, the, the oddity on defending wise for the Stars, they came and pressed across. They had it stuck on this side of the field, and they allowed that release. I was almost wondering, do they not want it to go down this left side? Because they really closed it off, made them switch it, and it gave two lanes, one lane to the right side and one lane passing lane right up front to Nagelstad. And once it got to his foot, it was pure magic. That was Tate Robertson's ball through. His second assist to the season, 19 goals now for the big Norwegian, and it's game on here in Romeo. This was what we were hoping for, but frankly thought we might not see, and that's goals. And we are back to a draw, so depending on how you voted <laughs> in the Nisa tweet, <laughs> that's right. you're still in it right now. You're sitting good if you, if you vote a draw. If we have 74 more minutes of scoreless soccer. What are the odds of that, do you think? Well, I'm just glad they didn't put D, 0-0 zero, zero draw. It's, I was really tempted to vote for that, but it was not an option, luckily. It just ran right through Andres Schalbot. Really kind of unfortunate that you've got a final night of the regular season where there really isn't anything at stake beyond pride and momentum and fitness. Because who doesn't love a last day in the Premier League where it's all up for grabs, championship and European qualification, relegation potentially. Of course, the upside of not really playing for much is that you can be kind of unencumbered by everything and just go out and play. Yeah, I would say that that's definitely the, the loosest we've seen the first couple minutes here of Michigan Stars, and, and, it, and it shows with that with that goal within two minutes. Can answer some questions going into the playoffs as well. Try to get a little more depth going. Try a couple things you, you really didn't want to risk during an actual game with, with really something on that line. Didn't quite stay in for Shalbunt. So it is 1-1. There's an issue with the scoreboard here, which is automatically feeding our graphics. So goals from Nemanja Vazdic, second minute. Marcus Nagelstad in the 16th minute. Okay, the last goal is not under review. <laughs> it is counting. And thank goodness no <laughs> VAR at this level. No take backs. He pointed to the middle of the field. They started. That goal stands. Martinez. Headed that right into the path of Anthony Bowie. Ball winders behind Rios, who collects against Tate Robertson. Back to Kayo. Vazdic. And Harry Nevins, first start for the club. Rios was trying to let that run on for Shalbot. Didn't quite work. Yeah, Nevins is an interesting story. Coming out of Southampton Academy, all the great players have kind of come out of Southampton the last 10 years or so. Probably had a great environment for, for really getting better at the game and improving his craft, as well as probably stories of, of who he met and who he played with when and, and who he megged and didn't meg. And more than likely, <laughs> the ones he did are, might be a little bit of a lie, but you never know, I guess. Southampton did just such a great job of, of turning out players. Frenchy just got his last warning. You can see the no more coming. From uh, Carter Brochu, the referee. Good free kick to release Gray down the left. Nagelstad just kind of lingering at the edge of the box. Wasn't really on there for James. Hooked away by Constant. Gray again with Stratton to his left. Good clearance. From Frank and Dixon. Well, he pulls down Cyrus Tran. Stars want a booking, won't get it, just a free kick. Cyrus Tran, I think, had his sock ripped by that tackle. 
Yeah, what are the odds he's the player on the field that does not cut his socks? So that's an issue. Everyone else is like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, no, he does cut his socks. There we go. We can see it already. I got a little equipment issue. We're back to it. We'll see. It's close up. Is it a loop, swoop, or pull? Or around the, uh, I don't know. There we go. I've never really thought about the many <laughs> different names of methods for tying well, one's boots. You, well, you could, you, you know why, because you don't coach six-year-olds. Well, that's, that's true. Seven-year-olds. That is yeah. so true. And long may that continue, <laughs> let me tell you. There's one dad on the sideline saying, that's why I carry the roll of tape. <laughs> <laughs> Just get him Velcro at that age. <laughs> yeah. That's less complicated. Constance free kick. Good catch in traffic by Kevin Gonzalez. Who's been the regular starter this year, replaced Alec Reddington, who was a regular last year. Made 21 starts in 2021. You can see the difference now. Tran really trying to make this intentional, pushing the ball to the left side of the field for the Stars, and it, it did work, but now Chattanooga able to hold it. But at least the Stars weren't chasing the ball across the field as they were earlier on that goal from Nagostad. This is where CFC are at their most dangerous. Here comes Gray, left that for Stratton. Keeper comes out, that's off of Stratton. Should be goal kick, and it is. They break really well, don't they? And it's maybe to Michigan Stars' credit, we haven't seen them able to do that too much in the first 22 minutes. A kind of fortuitous touch there, too. Back off Stratton, which he always thought was going to be in a corner kick. He's probably a little disappointed. Thought he might have won one for his team. Robert Yunchai starting it right back. He started at Flower City Union as well. Looking for Vostich up the line. Vostic wanted back, but not for long. As uh, Dixon goes flying, 32 years old from Kingston in Jamaica. In his third year playing with CFC, was previously with the other Chattanooga club, Chattanooga Red Wolves in USL League One. Martinez loops that forward. Nevins with the header away. And straight back to Gonzalez to build. Good run from Gray and a really good ball from the back to find him. He's got Cerro there in the box trying to cut it. Goes this way and that. Deflects away from Cerro's path and the Stars can get it clear. We've seen that ball several times so far in this first half, looking for Gray to let him do something on the left. Taylor Gray, former USL League Two forward of the year with Tri-Cities Otters, which is a magnificent name for a club. That kind of feels like the olden days of American soccer back in the old NASL in the 70s. None of this FC, AFC stuff. Let's go Tri-Cities Otters or New York Cosmos or Aztecs, et cetera. Hey, you really wonder what their otter ideas were. You knew that was coming. You're a bad, <laughs> bad man. Oh, that is a phenomenal, <laughs> that is a phenomenal name. Well, there are some really good ones in uh, American lower league soccer, especially in USL League Two. And there's a break on here for the Stars. Keeper has to retreat to his line. Cyrus Tran didn't really have much of an angle. Tried to send that near post and blast wide, but that is the kind of run that he is capable of making. It is, and then with him being the highest player, sometimes you can't get that secondary runner in behind, but if they overcommit to him and he can get something back, negative diagonal, or even really just square at that point, so he's pulled the defender over, pulled the goalkeeper over, he might have something on that backside as well. 
for a nice opportunity to clean something up if he's not able to get a good shot off like he wasn't able to quite there. But, you know, that he had to try to get something so special at that point, and, and that's where the failure came because it's just so difficult at that rate of speed and with that short of a window. It is interesting seeing this star side with a small pacey center forward because you're really not going to see Leon Marich make that kind of run to get in behind the defense. Yeah, and since he's really up there alone, kind of a little bit more on the island anyways, it's not that easy to kind of interrelate to somebody else. I mean, he does check back into the midfield, but, you know, maybe this is a situation with a guy like Trans on the field next time with him. If Marich is checking back into the midfield as he does so well as, as a holding holding striker and a target, maybe that's where Tran can get his kind of run off of him a little bit or someone else can run off and get a little bit of height early. Chattanooga throw in the 27th minute. Goals from Vazdic and Nagelstad, and then great balance, and then the pace of Ian Cerro. Here is Nagelstad again. Unable to cut, Vazdic got out of the way. That just stayed in, Shalbot couldn't head it away. Will be a throw in near the corner flag for CFC, which they'll take quickly, maybe a little too quickly. That's great pace from Darren Rios up the left. And he'll have two offering support through the middle. One of them is Alexander Frank. The short option there is Bowie. Finally, the whistle goes against the Stars. And yeah, that whole sequence as well, you could see Alexander Frank on his run in, tangled up with somebody pushing back and forth too. And that's where you're starting to wonder, you can be careful, get a guy into a yellow card on something like that on a run, because he already has his warning. Imagine it was probably caused by someone trying to hold him back. But no call from the AR. Then again, he might have been letting it ride since the ball was in the in the box for for Michigan Stars. Nagelstad finds Gray. Fakes the shot back on the left foot. There's the cross. Not quite there. And Rio spins that up for a throw in again near the corner flag. Tate Robertson passing up the long throw. Maybe they should go the long throw in route next time. Their last two from a similar distance really haven't paid off. Well, especially you can find Nagelstad and hanging up a PK spot in between the six and the 18, um, as well just to the outside of him. Taylor Gray has been really active off the ball. You can tell he's opened up space for creativity for other players. He's whipped some nice balls in as well. I mean, those two guys, I think, had a nice, nice hole of space right there waiting. Be a great target for a long throw. Frank pops it to Yun Chai. Constant. And Frank loses out to. Greg Stratton. Greg can run at them again. Didn't have the benefit of an overlapping run from Stratton, however. Cyrus Tran, I think, has had a good first half doing exactly that, just harassing Chattanooga center backs when they do have the ball. to just run over. Taylor Gray was with Maryland last year, scored one. And playing in maybe a more forward-thinking team this year, has gotten six, though he has not scored in his last 12 appearances. So he'll try and change that here tonight. No fouls we play on. Bowie is still down. This option play comes in because the, the ball was near him on the ground, so he's obviously 
in a dangerous place. He's also holding the back of his head, neck area, so that's a automatic clue for official to make a stop. Bowie missed a lot of time middle of the season through injury and then got a straight red in that really weird match against Maryland Bobcats a couple of home games ago where Maryland had Jocelyn Passayan and Richard Forka sent off in the same sequence, one for a bad challenge on Jacob Campbell, the other for descent after the fact, and then, what was it, 10 minutes later, Bowie went right through Felix and on their goalkeeper, and he got sent off. Made his first appearance back against Flower City Union on Monday. And he'll be able to carry on. I imagine that's something that this Michigan Stars bench will keep an eye on. Make sure he is he's okay. Obviously his own health, but also they, they want to make sure it's not something they could just clean up right now, take him off the field and give him a head start and heal him up for later. Richard Dixon feeling the after effects of that. Came to the States from Jamaica at the age of 14. And has been a regular in the side all season as captain. Unlike some teams we've seen in Mesa this year, they don't have a very big squad in terms of sheer numbers. we go again. Seen a lot of gray on the left, not quite as much of Brett Jones on the right. He'll be the intended target of this cross field ball, however. Nagelstad very, very skilled. Here he is a bit deeper to pick up possession. Jones for Cerro. And two kept their runs going. I don't think that's what Tate Robertson was aiming at. Former Bowling Green State University Falcon. Their uh, pointy ball silly team <laughs> got a big win over the Miami Red Hawks today. I mean, years prior, that just means they did win a game. Let's just be fair. So. This year they won another. I they know. haven't always yeah. been able to say that. <laughs> so at least any, any win is, is big down there. Among the traditional Mid-American Conference schools, they're one of the only ones that has a men's soccer program. Yeah, they've got a lot of changes in the MAC. Yinchai's cross behind everybody, but finds its way to Darren Rios. The, hmm. amazing, the amazing thing with the Mid-American Conference is you still have a story program like a BGSU. It's a storied, historically soccer program for Division One. Western Michigan, who's come on the last few years. Oh boy, Akron, such good good quality teams and it's really a shame they can't get some more universities to buy in and, and, and sponsor the sports on the men's side so they kind of have to do some creative things Had a couple teams come in recently that are now back out to other conferences West Virginia Kyo's ball stripling heads away yep, that's being held up for foul there but I was going to say West Virginia Georgia State as well that, that were keeping them above that number they needed to have the, the postseason tournament but now they shrink under that Realignment is really kind of absurd. Georgia, famously in the middle of America. Of course, you'll have teams from California joining the Big Ten soon, so God only knows. Hey, see the shining sea at that point. Rutgers on one side and L.A. on the, on the other side with UCLA and USC. Yes, that natural rivalry between Rutgers and <laughs> UCLA. Contract the fever. <laughs> Well, who was it? I think it was Central Florida and UConn in football not too long ago that invented a trophy to play for. It's like, if you're UConn, I don't think you have any really strong feelings about Central Florida one way or the other, and vice versa. Unless you make that game played in November, then you love the away game. If you're flying south to Florida, yeah. absolutely. I'm certain you do. Well, we said we hadn't seen a whole lot of Brett Jones on the right, and here he is in a really good position. Gray had made a run. Constant slid it away. Nagelstad off the post. Gray to follow. Flag is up. And he ballooned it over the bar anyway. 
Yeah, I was surprised at that offside as it was anyway, so saved by missing it. So no argument to be had as it is, but I mean, that was a good look. We, we talked about, anyways, I think Gray not being on it for the goals recently. But he made a really nice run down the left side of the field. He was available, wasn't able to be, be gotten on that first ball through, because that's a lot to ask for. Putting a ball on the ground through two or three players while retreating, tough to get to. Right there for the rebound. He's going to be kicking himself for not finishing that offside flag or not. Paul Lewis has only faced a couple of shots. The one, of course, he had absolutely no chance of getting to. Superb finish from Marcus Nagelstad having been played in by Tate Robertson. Stratton for Gray. He's being given all this space to go straight down the line. Vazdic bodied him up. Cerro. Gray again. That's a neat little ball for Alex James. Did that go over the line? Apparently not. We play on. Cerro dancing down. Referee with a shake of the head. Points for a goal kick. <laughs> Ian Cerro, four goals scored this year. Spent last season with Chicago House. No longer at Nice's professional ranks, but still going as an amateur club. Free kick now for the Stars. Fish do a nice job to try to calm things down so nothing else happens. Of course, Stars want that ball back, and Richard Dixon wanted to put the ball behind everybody else and slow it down on the restart. Oh, he sent it wide. There's the cross. Didn't quite find Alexander Frank. And Jones ran out of room. Second ball in the field was a little bit of a hold up there. Some confusion whether they go or not, but the officials hadn't seen it. So away we go. Vosdic went to ground to disrupt. Six and a half minutes and change left in the first half. You know, we talked about these teams playing kind of unencumbered. It's been a fairly freewheeling, I think, first half. Kyle picks that up. And here's Cyrus Tran. Overlapping run to his left from Shalbot if he wants to use him. Tran gets shoved over. And the free kick goes the other way. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> With a more, what appeared to be a more bizarre no calls. But the AR didn't signal. We got four sets of eyes. And the fourth official is just talking to the coaching staff from Chattanooga. No one's up making anything up on the Michigan star side. First half has been played in a good spirit, which not every game we've seen this year has been. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, they've, they've pretty much moved on and dealt with it. There's some chatter to the ref to, to plead their case, but we haven't seen the refs around by any more than one person yet, so that's a good sign. Once you've clinched the playoffs and you've clinched your seed, the sweat's fine, but no blood or tears, please. Off of James. Well, it stayed in there for Bowie. Corner. And the Stars with their normal lineup on the field, they really feast on these, having chopped and changed so much tonight. We'll see. 
That's uh, Frank, I think, has gone over to serve this in. Former Monaco youth player as a teenager. Constant is still a big target at six foot six. Wrestling match there in the six. I think that took a little bit too long to develop. You're waiting for the big wind up so you can have a shot through traffic, but the ball didn't come down quickly enough. And uh, the stoppage because Matt Constant had stayed down right at the edge of the six yard box and is now back to his feet. And having a fairly one sided conversation at the much smaller Carter Brochu. And Brochu will come over here and have a word with the assistant referee. But more likely, no one's going to be happy with this because Chattanooga was pressuring back to Paul Lewis. He really didn't have options. Only one Michigan Stars player was back. Two Chattanooga players were closing in on him. The rest of the Stars hadn't worked back. Matt Constant was up in the, the 18 still. And of course, on the star side, you know, they want the PK for, for Matt Constant being taken down. And he's still pleading his case. Drop ball instead, and the stars will build. Here's Frank and Vazdic. Robert Yunchai over there to his right. That's not a bad ball at all to try and hit a line drive to the back post. It's headed behind for another corner. You know the officials are going to be watching this corner kick now. After the last contact, <laughs> actually, the center official was staring at Matt Constant as he was walking up. I always like to make sure he remembers to watch him. He's honing in on, on that pile of players right now. I think the odds are really good on a whistle while the ball is in the air and maybe hasn't even met its apex yet. Color me surprised. Oh, there's a chance at the back post. That spun into the path of Darren Rios, but couldn't redirect it on target. And even after they're clearing out, the center official looks over, does a little sign to the AR, making sure nothing was amiss there. So it's good officiating at that point, right? Just trying to make sure you cover your bases. You're about to go into halftime anyways. You want to make sure the AR is all felt like they had their part in the game. I just stayed on the line for Gray. Stars have possession back anyhow. Mm. Rios couldn't quite take the touch he needed. And Frankie Martinez was there. Been a good first half, this. Fitting capper to the NISA regular season. Playoff action starting next Friday night. We'll have the first postseason match right here from Romeo. The Stars, the three seed, the six seed, Syracuse Pulse. Really looking forward to it. That's a nice ball from Yun Chai. Touch back into the path of Nemanja Vazdic. Yun Chai is still up there. Cross takes a big deflection. Keeper couldn't really come for it. And a foul against Michigan Stars. Two minutes maybe of time added on. We'll find out when the board goes up. Which hopefully gets turned our way. It doesn't always. Trying to build out again with Dixon and now Alex James. And that will be two minutes of time added on. Here's Jones being allowed to cut it. Nogglestot for James. Robertson, the right back, arrives, taken by Lewis at the near post. 
Not always the easiest thing for a big man like Paul Lewis to get down there. Six foot five, Seattle Sounders Academy player. Again, Chattanooga really did him a favor by not having any runners coming in, so he's able to get that clearly. Didn't have to worry about getting through players or, quite frankly, kicked in the face as he went for it, which I always want the keeper to have maybe – don't really want to kick him in the face, but you always want to make him think you might. <laughs> Zero is played in Nagelstad here. He's got Gray as an option. Lovely footwork from Marcus Nagelstad that just leaked under Paul Lewis for a moment, but he covers. Still 1-1 right before halftime. Well, we said he doesn't need too many chances to take one. Nagelstad took his first chance, nearly converted on the second. There's nobody where Cyrus Tran thought there was somebody. Yunchai there does the wise thing and just turns that out of play. Yeah, this deep in the stoppage time. You're just entering your defensive third. Just want it clean, hit somewhere. Yunchai toe pokes that away, and that's all for the first 45 minutes. Well, the goals, Chris Black came early. Nemanja Vazdic, an absolute peach of a finish into the top corner in the second minute for the Stars to take the lead. Chattanooga responded 14 minutes later, and who else but Marcus Nagelstad? Yep, you know, he'd been shut out here for a while, so he had to get on the board before the season, the regular season ended. And I'll tell you what, he finally gave the, the Chattahooligans something to wave the flag about with their 1-1 tie at the halftime with Nagelstad on the board. One Chattahooligan present here in Romeo and one apiece between Michigan Stars and Chattanooga FC. We'll see you back here for the second half. You're watching NISA on 11. Welcome back to Romeo High School. You're watching NISA on 11, the regular season finale. It's Michigan Stars 1, Chattanooga FC 1. Mason and Chris with you here in Southeast Michigan. Great to have you along. What do you want to see, my friend, in the second half? We're already spoiled at this point with these two playing each other, having two goals in the first half, so... Who wants to press to win it? One change in the second half so far. So Kyle Nelson coming into the Michigan Stars lineup. How long does Chattanooga keep pushing with the players they have out there? What what really is the leash on each of those players as, as they uh, stay in this attack? So you'd imagine minimal change on this Michigan Stars side. The attack is going to probably stay the same. Trying to get down the field right away off the kickoff. Trying to establish themselves. It's tough to beat their first goal in the first two minutes of the first half. But it looks like so far they are going are gonna to try it. Michigan Stars in white, Chattanooga in navy. Really enjoyed, by the way, our halftime show, which as far as I'm concerned, was just watching the Chattanooga subs who were down trying to stay warm do choreographed dances to both YMCA and Thriller. That was a nice touch. You almost wonder if they're ringers. They might not even be the actual just players answers. on the rosters. Yeah, just the halftime. <laughs> <laughs> Headed out of play by Harry Nevins. His first start for Michigan Stars coming on the final night of the regular season. Happy birthday, by the way, to Robert Yunjai. There would be no better birthday present for him, I'm sure, than three big points. Even if it's three big points that don't really mean much in the grand scheme of things, Stars already locked into the number three seed in the postseason NISA playoffs. But any win is a good one, especially when it's over the best team in the league in Chattanooga. Here's Tate Robertson trying to shake loose for a cross. And the shot off the right foot of Brent Jones was cleared away by the Stars. Robertson assisted on Marcus Nagelstad's goal that equalized in the 16th minute. And Chattanooga FC really putting the Stars under the gun in the first 90 seconds of the second half. And it's Robertson who's up for this throw in. They don't really have a long throw, or at least we haven't seen one just yet. And they keep breaking away, open up space for a short throw, which they get right there. 
kind of feel what they're trying to accomplish there as they kept, do, kept doing little runs away, little runs away, little runs away. Create some space right on that touch line. And of course, check back into it, which probably everyone figured they were going to do, but you can't risk getting thrown over. Kayo took his man out as well, who's still down for Chattanooga. And with uh, Robertson prone in the middle of the pitch, we'll have a stoppage. Robertson from Springfield, Ohio. That's down around Dayton. Chattanooga throw-in goes right back to Paul Lewis to Tenda Makruva, given the night off. I would think it's likely that we'll see him in the first round of the playoffs next Friday against Syracuse Pulse. The Stars on the attack for the first time in the second half. Bowie's ball back post is too deep. Kruva did have an appearance there in the game today, but it was on the big screen at halftime <laughs> in a Halloween sketch. <laughs> so he did impact the game so far at halftime. Kruva and Andres Shalbad, the stars of the show. Tatenda is usually the star of the show anyway. I kind of wonder if they, they, they tell him, here, here's your blocks right here. You need to stay right here. And he's probably up forward towards, his, towards the camera. Like, no, 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 you got to stay back there. Stay back there. <laughs> he's moving around. <laughs> Juggling the camera. <laughs> Nevin steps in ahead of Nagelstad. Cross might find Cyrus Trent. Oh, maybe a chance. Down goes Bowie. Referee waves it away. It's a goal kick. Yeah, official immediately waving it off. I'm not sure why he's talking to a Chattanooga player now at the end, but immediately was waving it off. Wasn't going to have it. It's Frankie Martinez, whom he's talking to. Carter Brochu, the referee. We had the first half go by without a yellow card, I think, which is maybe a first for the games that you and I have done up here this summer. <laughs> started, started summer was, and fall. Yeah, I started thinking it was you. It certainly wasn't me, but it must have been you, I thought, maybe, with all the cards coming every time we're here together. Frank concedes the free kick. Took out the legs of Brett Jones. He scored twice this year, got six last year for Chattanooga. And we'll see at what points in the second half Chattanooga goes to their bench and when the Michigan Stars go back to their bench, having brought Kyle Nelson onto the break for Darren Rios. And you start thinking about if you're the Stars, preserving guys for next week, or maybe give guys like Steven Yunchai, Leon Marich, et cetera, maybe a half an hour run out just to try and stay fit. And maybe the thinking with Chattanooga coming here, having already sewn up the top seed and playing a full-strength team, they haven't played since September 28th, at least not in Nisa. They played a friendly against the MLS next pro team from Charlotte. Well, that wasn't a full-strength side either that they played. Gray trying to flick that to James. Finds its way to Bowie, and that's a lovely ball for Vazdich. Yunchai's up there. That's a nice little run from Robert Yunchai, the birthday boy. Oh, it might find Bowie, it has! Michigan Stars take the lead! <laughs> 
Some hugs for Bowie, a lot of them for Robert Yunchai, who set it up. Inspiring run to the midfield. He found that space, took the big enough touches when he could, right? When he had a little space to take the bigger touches, allowed him to run a lot more and focus on gaining and covering some ground instead of retouching the ball. And just a little redirect as Chetnuka tried to do something with that ball so it wouldn't find the foot of the Michigan Stars. Great finish then, Kevin Gonzalez. Nothing he can do really about that. I almost got to it, but I was just impressed to be in the running to get to that ball from that short of a range on that ball. Well, it isn't quite Halloween yet, but it's maybe not too early to throw some Halloween puns out there with the Stars playing their Happy Halloween video at halftime. The Stars full of tricks and treats on the final night of the regular season and fitting that it's Anthony boo -E who <laughs> scores to make it 2-1. If you have to explain the joke, it's not as funny. You could have just. Or is it much funnier? <laughs> it could be. As long as it makes yourself laugh, it really doesn't matter about anyone else. I'm still smiling. <laughs> we'll see if Michigan stars are still smiling come the end of the night. That really was a great run, too, from Robert yeah, Yunchai. It really was. Same thing, same thing with Bowie, too, staying out wide enough to the left, that opening up that space to be ran into. Can Chattanooga answer back? They've got a throw in here that came off of Andres Shalbot. Robertson's short throw. James and rode the challenge from Alexander Frank. Grays there on the left. James kept his run going. That's a great little change of speed and acceleration, but it's over the line. Nothing but a goal kick in the end for the Stars. There's a yellow line that then intersects inside that white, uh, kind of thick line from the back end of the, of the end zone. That's where the officials are going off of. You can tell it's easy to see on the screen as far as from television what's going into the end zone, but from there the officials got a little better view of it. And, of course, you're not supposed to use the football markings, but let's not kid ourselves. Of course, you do. Everyone does. Yeah, I always kind of feel like when the officials don't use it, they're just trying to trigger someone to be angry. <laughs> 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 Looking for a response when they put that wall at 11 and a half yards. Not that a lot of referees <laughs> need to give people additional reasons, <laughs> no, mind you. No. This has been a well-officiated game, though, it must be said. It's been well-managed. They haven't always been. Here's Vazdic, and that's played behind Anthony Bowie, not where he wanted that ball to be played. Finds Martinez. Chattanooga, I think, is riding with this group, at least for now, nobody really warming up. Right as I say that, one player stands on the bench, <laughs> so maybe somebody will go off on a warm-up jog. Yeah, one player is in behind, in behind the, 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 the goal line as well, but I don't think he's moved in the last 10 minutes, so it may be a mannequin back there. <laughs> a tackling dummy, perhaps. Jones didn't have anywhere to go with it. Tackled sideways by Shalbot, and Nelson bangs it away. Yeah, it's been a terrific effort the first 56 minutes from this Michigan Stars team that starting 11 is lacking most of the regular starting lineup. Constant and Bowie have stayed in. And Shalbot, but that's about it. Otherwise, backup keeper and Paul Lewis. Harry Nevins, who hasn't started a match for the club before. Robert Yunchai didn't make his first start for them until Monday. And Tran and Vazdic. Kayo's been on the outside looking in lately. And Rios and Frank. They have more than gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the league's best team. Yep, and it's just fun to watch out. 
how they are interrelating. They settled in a little bit. Let's see, of course, I say well, that. <laughs> that <laughs> was anything but settled. Announcer's curse. We'll have the ball out of bounds the next time we talk about something like that, I guess. Uh, but, uh, yes, it took them a little bit at first, a little disjointed as they sorted things out. I say that even when they scored two minutes in. But still some little errors when they're playing a ball where they think someone might be going and they're just not quite on the same page yet, which is to be expected with so many changes. It's one thing to push, put one player in, kind of shift things around, but it's another thing, a wholesale big new big new lineup out in the field at the same time, really trying to sort each other out. I feel like there's an acceptable and understood margin of error when you do change so many of the starting 11 as the star staff has done this evening. That took a big bounce off of Shalbod, and it's played in Chattanooga here. And Shalbod recovers well. It's Nick Spielman will be the first to come on for Chattanooga. as college ball at East Tennessee State, and we'll see who makes way for him. Alex James. So playing an advanced position based on the subbing unless they shift something around a little bit. Give them a little bit of size in that midfield 6-3 listed there. It does say from Melbourne, Florida, but now I'm wondering. No gloves, no long sleeves. Either <laughs> either he's from Florida, so he didn't know how to pack. <laughs> or he's been he's been up in the Midwest for too long and now he's settled in just fine. This nice ah, cool evening. Does look like Spielman is a midfield sitter in there alongside Dixon. Shalbot, bit of space was cleared out by the run of Anthony Bowie. Tried to bend that to the back post and caught by Gonzalez. Feet of Gray, let him try and create. Finds the feet of Brett Jones. He'll line up a shot. Great diving, sprawling stop by Lewis. And Big Paul is lighting up his defense. Jones was given way too much time and space to get that shot away. Again, at this level, most of the players in the field have no issues with space being able to hit a ball. They at least need to make them think. Shut down at least a a shooting lane, or at least shut down a passing lane so that Paul Lewis only has to worry about a shot. Only, only one Even with Spielman in, they're still going short. Here you wonder if they might try to target the big man in the middle, but instead he's, he ends up playing on the ground. Taro didn't have anything on for himself there. Ends up as a throw in across the way. Eight unbeaten for Chattanooga FC. Michigan Stars trying to put an end to that on the final night of the regular season. Nelson clears. Bowie will try and camp under this. And he's won the throw in. Kyle Nelson, one of two that joined Michigan Stars in midseason from Valley United, Stephen Elias being the other. We might see him at some point in the remainder of the second half. On 
although the group on the pitch has done really well for themselves. Bowie heads that backwards. Vosdic, who scored the opening goal in the second minute. Given right up to Dixon. And that's Spielman who just came on, and now Taylor Gray. Nelson with a good foot in. To Alexander Frank, Dixon dispossesses, and now Nagelstad has it. And how many times have we seen that this evening where Chattanooga looks to go forward and there's just nothing there? Yeah, even then, you got Nagelstad plays the ball back, negative, and, and he's not even that high. He's kind of <laughs> holding back a little bit too much. He's receiving that with four defenders between him and the goal, and he drops that ball back, and he's able not to make a penetrating run or anything. They still have numbers that they have to take on. Really having a hard time and can consistently for Chattanooga gaining vertical space, vertical ground. Kayo got into the tackle there on Jones. I beg pardon, not Jones, but Cerro. Here comes Gray. Runner alongside, cuts in, he'll try and unleash a shot, maybe on the right foot, the space was closed down. Good tracking back by Bowie to rescue possession for the Stars. Uh, Dixon got caught high by Cyrus Tran. Up into his chest, not an advertent thing, but still doesn't feel too good. I wouldn't suggest going and looking for it, that's for sure. <laughs> and I but think yeah. uh, Richard Dixon is pointing out all the <laughs> other fouls that have racked up. He's got it rubbing, he was rubbing over on his shoulder then. Leon Marich, Jonathan Firmino, and Steven Elias all getting ready to come on. And uh, I had kind of wondered if we might see guys like that in for the last half hour. Might get around 25 minutes on the final night of the regular season. And again, there's nothing there. Forced backwards, though maybe they can pull the Stars out of position. That's the thing, it kind of hasn't mattered too much who's on the pitch for Michigan Stars this year. It's really difficult to pull them out of their shape. Yeah, there's a reason they don't give up a lot of goals, and that's really, it's that team desire to press as, as quickly as possible and then drop off too. You'll see one press, the ball shifts, someone might drop off, someone else presses out. Really consistent defending to make it difficult to break down. I mean, defending as a block, you can see them running off right now. That's a little bit of Drop back, compress, reset. Steven Yunchai will come on also. And Chattanooga has a free kick. So that's four heavy hitters for the Stars who will come in. Anthony Bowie will come off. Perry Nevins, Nemanja Vazdic, and Cyrus Tran. So four on, four off for Michigan Stars. 
I should correct myself, Harry Nevins, I think, stayed on. Came over to get a little bit of instruction to Alexander Frank, who made way. The Stars trying to salt away what would be a really impressive win on the last night of the regular season. Saro, good ball in, looking for Jones, 2-2. Two -two. Really tough angle to bury that one, but Brett Jones is up to the task. Chattanooga has equalized in the 68th minute. The center official was talking for a while with Paul Lewis on the backs for for Michigan Stars. I think it was just more of a hey, I'll list, I'll hear you out, but you're still gonna be a goal. <laughs> We're still starting for the kickoff here, but I mean, game management's worked for him so far today, hasn't? I mean, he's he hasn't changed any any calls or anything. It doesn't look like he's being bullied. He'll just hear him out real, real quick and move on. I imagine really the big disappointment for the Stars is you, you put in four players like that and you concede that quickly. Of course, they weren't even into the game yet really mentally or physically. Now the question is how do they respond? You can't run to Brett either. You got those guys. Stars player down on the far side. I think that's a cramp. Could still see McLeod, Shmelev, Pichenyi. That's Robert Gunchai's down. Don't see anybody else warming up for Michigan Stars. You know, we normally think of cramps as being something that happens when it's really hot and really humid. You'll see them on nights like this, too, though. Yeah, cold doesn't help, and then you think about how much the actually the wind. It's been a windy day the last couple of days, and the cold actually does dehydrate you. It takes a lot of moisture out of your body. Let's stay on top of that as well. And some you think about how long the season really is in Nisa. Something. Starts in April. Here we are in mid-October. Wave back on, so back to full strength for the Stars. Here they come again. That's played back, Shalbon through the uprights. That's such a tough ball to strike sweetly. Yeah, and you're already there too, so you're not arriving. Instead, you're pivoting on the ball. If you're at least arriving, get the momentum going forward. Firmino with a thumping header. Okay, Robertson going up the flank for the pacey Brett Jones. Hey ben, did, uh, did Bill touch the ground? Shalbon did well. And Leon Marich had to come back. It was nice to see him get a goal on Monday against Flower City Union. He hasn't always been rewarded for his level of activity in terms yeah. of finding the back of the net this year. That's four in total for him. Three in the league, one in the Independent Cup against Metro Louisville. Yeah, just the, the hold-up play, right, and the effort <laughs> defensive-wise as well, pressuring across. They even leave space sometimes just for others to, to really run into. Steven Yunchai. Chai. 
right off the end of his boot. Oof, right to Merritt, a missed kick from Robertson. And Dixon, boy, slides that straight back to his goalkeeper. Yeah, some, some real frustration for the Stars that there wasn't a foul called there. I mean, imagine that the official maybe was, was thinking he gave advantage. He came over trying to act like he at least was acknowledging it. Just bounded away from Steven Yunchai. And here's another rampaging run from Robertson up the right. Maybe a short leash there for Brett Jones. He's probably as small of his back. No need to risk anything, although if you're Chattanooga, you've got a bit of time before you play your semifinal against a team to be determined. It would be at the end of the month, so a couple of weeks off. Yeah, that one's a free kick conceded by Harry Nevins on Marcus Nagelstad. Somebody's getting booked. Hey, Maven for knocking the ball away and the time wasting. It's Matt Constant. Imagine his responses. Do you remember when Richard Dixon threw the ball behind him? <laughs> 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 Do you remember that? Do you remember? No, no, it's your yellow yeah. card. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't see it written in my book here. No, I don't remember that. <laughs> Angle is probably right for Ian Saro. And if you feel really gutsy. Take a little different angle, you put it on frame. Little touch, Saro, Gray, flags up. And uh, Nagelstad didn't make contact anyway. That may have just been on Tate Robertson, but he's right there. Changing the play, whether he touches it or not. It's gonna be called whether it goes to Nagelstad even or, or Robertson, it's gotta be called either way. Nevins went very direct, almost found Cayo. Stripling, back to Kevin Gonzalez. Martinez allowed to carry it up to midfield. Stratton turning, but he turned it straight over the line. Just over 14 minutes left in the regular season, plus stoppage time. Vosdich and Nagelstad scored in the first half, Bowie and Jones in the second. Sarah getting into Firmino, who clears. And Gray running with Nelson, but Gray was offside. <laughs> Semifinals, by the way, I mentioned will be on October 29th. That's uh, two weeks from today. Chattanooga and Cal United strikers getting buys beyond the quarterfinals. 
So if the Stars were to win their quarterfinal match over Syracuse, they would go on the road. Semifinals could be meeting number five between Chattanooga and Michigan Stars. We'll see. And chatting before the game, we talked about if if this game ended in 0-0 and they had to play again, they'd just skip <laughs> right to penalty kicks, not even yeah. bother playing the games, <laughs> just right to the PKs. And move on from there. So, But now, if they do meet again, they're going to have to play now because we got some goals today. And thank goodness. Yun Chai giving chase. And Marich dropping in where Yun Chai had been. Gray's on the right now. Oh, that's great skill from Robertson. It leapt over the attempted tackle from Kayo. Now Kayo's getting booked. Hmm. It's interesting too because I'm assuming it was get, he's getting booked for what a reckless attempt at a tackle. I, I thought. Well, you you don't necessarily need to make contact yeah, for a foul or a card to be issued. It's got to be what what is what, what the thought process is. To be fair, it did look pretty reckless. <laughs> him chasing him down and yeah. trying to put an end to it. And that's certainly not the uh, certainly not the time of, of year to get a, a red card. I think everyone's thankful that he didn't make contact. I think, I think Jonathan Firmino almost talked himself into a yellow card too. <laughs> he hasn't been on the pitch for very long. I'm just hoping the referee came over and said, this is because you missed. <laughs> <laughs> I can't call strikes, but I can give you a card. A little tongue in cheek and hopefully de de deflate the situation. Marich pulling back Martinez. He's just testing those Hummel jerseys, see what kind of stretch they had in them. They've got good stretch, and away we go with the match. Martinez in his third season with CFC. Played collegiately at Iona. And at UMass Lowell, made 52 starts in total. Hummel USA headquarters just near Lowell, Mass. So if there's an issue with the tensile strength of the kits, <laughs> there you that's go. where you send your complaints. Yeah, I don't know. You, you still no complaints so far. Yeah, I think you still call Jeff Dubak. I don't know if that, if that still works that way. <laughs> His home phone number is. <laughs> <laughs> sure how well that would go over at his house. I've got plenty of Hummel gear that I've gotten from your warehouse when you have <laughs> your once a year sales and they've held up pretty darn well. Free kick for Chattanooga, 81st minute. This will be from right at the touch line. The fun fact is their international headquarters in Aarhus, Denmark, a former World War II era submarine base. Really? Yeah, it's really interesting, beautiful place. Uh, the family that bought Hummel not too long ago moved him in there. I guess I guess it is long ago now, moved him into that really interesting building. Right on the shore there, on the water. You're looking over the water as you're working. Certainly a conversation piece. Yeah. Roberts in the step over. Here's Saro's ball trying to curl that to the back post. Robert Yunchai won that in the air, and the free kick goes against CFC. Couple asked for PK. They had less than 0% chance of a PK being called there. If you're the Michigan Stars coaching staff, 
Is anybody from the starting 11 that normally isn't a part of it, have they maybe played their way into the thinking for the quarterfinals against Syracuse? Yeah, th that's the tough thing, right? Because you're, you're trying to figure out, you know, what do you want to add to your lineup and where? Is it maybe someone like Tran has played himself into an option if we want to play this way? Uh, the way that he played up top, certainly a different look. Or saying, hey, look, maybe you know, we can go a little smaller up top every once in a while if we want to give Merritt a break. Or, or maybe we, we put him in together to partner up. I mean, really, really from that standpoint, that's really something that could happen. Everyone else is now, it's, it's, it's more of, okay, depending on what happens, who's doing a little bit better to go. Now, Connor Brochu says, get up. And Chattanooga trying to do just that for sure. Taylor Gray plays that off the back of Andres Schalbot. Yeah, I think, too, an important one is, is how Bowie performed today because of being out of the lineup for so long. You know, that's, hey, let's get a run in his legs and let's see what, what he may hold for the postseason going forward. And we talked about it. There is a lot that he can give you in so many different roles. Yeah. Right or left back, right or left flank, central midfield. That's a throw in. I think that coaching staff is going to take a look at the game tape, go back and figure out, okay, what did we ask this person to do going into the game? How did they perform with that task? How might that interrelate to something going forward? And also just kind of take those notes just in case they do have an injury down the road or, or want to change a, a way they play. That's a good ball in behind for Steven Yunchai. Only has Steven Elias up there. Yunchai's attempted cross is blocked. Cerro coming the other way for Chattanooga. That'll be their throw in right on halfway. And Roddy Green set to come on, longtime Detroit City player. Scored once this year in a 5 0 win over Flower City Union. Need to see him back in Southeast Michigan. Here's Stephen Elias trying to peel away from Greg Stratton. Good ball, trying to find Marich. Colin Stripling got his head in the way. It's Marich for Cayo, and he takes out Dixon, and Cayo's already on a yellow card, remember. And Carter Brochu, knowing that, presumably doesn't even give a thought to booking him. And Roddy Green is on for Marcus Nagelstadt. You see Tate Robertson at the bottom of the screen down there. Looking a little beat up. That's because it, he just tried to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Marich on his shoulder. He lost. I wouldn't recommend doing <laughs> he, that. He did get back up, though. Credit to him. He did get back up. Better man than I. Yeah, I think Merritt was just excited they got to have some contact like that. <laughs> Chattanooga was given a free kick right around the 30-yard line. Well, might we see a late winner from either of these teams? I, say, I, I don't need the football lines to know that it's not 10 yards. <laughs> <laughs> Fisher's kind of walked away. I think he assumed that they'd keep backing up. Well, you know what happens when you assume. That's right. Scoop forward for Gray. Gray's cross. Yunchai knocks that up in the air. Nevins heads it down, but not away very far. Schaubad's clearance, only as far as Frankie Martinez. Not a very good ball. Marich couldn't get it untangled from his feet. And Dixon has it, and now Cerro. Martinez accelerates. 
License to get forward to the Stars, not really closing him down. Here's Jones, he's already scored one to the second half. And he's put Chattanooga ahead with three minutes remaining. Well, they just gave him much too much space. Too much space, and you could see it happening too. The space was already there before the ball even comes across into it. Well, that's a terrific strike. Well, that's one that I have to think is really going to frustrate Michigan Stars. And now Jonathan Firmino getting into it with Richard Dixon. Yeah, Firmino walked across to push someone in the back. Walked through everybody, pushed on the back. And, of course, then he got pushed back. And, and right now, Kyle Nelson is a one-man peacekeeping unit out there. Now the others are kind of settling down, settling off. And Firmino, we said earlier that he might talk himself into a yellow card. Now he has. He has by action, and then his mouth afterwards, you could tell, went it back down. Well, if you're Chattanooga, you're thinking, let's go and win this thing. Yeah, at this point. I mean, they're sitting on it now, aren't they? Tighten up for the last few minutes. And frustration for the Stars who have done so much, so well all evening. Brett Jones scoring twice in 19 minutes to take a 3-2 lead. Leading for the first time in this one. Kayo's got it back. Free kick to the Stars, though. Yeah, and I think it's going to be tight. The last three minutes are going to be called extremely tight by the official based on what you're seeing now. He does not want this thing to get out of control. Accumulations of yellow cards, by the way, do get wiped away going into the postseason. It's worth noting. Steven Yunchai's ball is over hit. On the last Chattanooga goal, but I'd say they gave them too much space. Really, it's Frankie Martinez, the center back, making that long yeah. kind of shuffling run up and nobody really wanting to close him down, put a foot down and stop him from advancing. And if you give Brett Jones any kind of space, well, he's going to take advantage of that. Into the 90th minute. And Ethan Corrin will come on. Has barely been used this season for Chattanooga. Three minutes of stoppage time. They just added some amount of time. Guys, 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 guys. No, stop. How much time did they Marich circled back to try and win it. Greg Stratton cross from the left. Nevins volleys away. And now the substitution can happen. Late, late cameo for Corin. And again, Saro will make way for him. And Sarah's done well. And really, for me, it's the play of Richard Dixon that allows CFC to have a couple of forward-thinking midfielders out there on the field with them. Yeah. With anyone that's able to go forward su successfully without putting their team at a severe disadvantage on the counter, it means someone else is thinking about how to sit in and cover those runs or how to open up, get someone else opened up or serve that ball into them. Can Elias dig out the cross? He's won to throw it. Look 
What kind of long throw does Kayo have? Matt Constant is up. He is so often the target of these long throws at six foot six. Doesn't win the first ball. Gray does. There's the cross, and a pretty good one. Elias, oof, <laughs> redirected over the bar. Another corner. And nice side foul by Elias, so it wasn't taken off too high. That's always the worry, right? You get jammed up up there, and oh. <laughs> uh, I think it was the goalkeeper, Kevin Gonzalez. I think he rolled the ball into the field, so it'd be too high. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Lewis is up there, and why not? Back post, missed it. Goal kick. Oh, I want another quarter kick just because the goalkeeper's up there. Come on. What would be a more Nisa end to the regular <laughs> season <laughs> than a late equalizer from a That's goalkeeper? Phenomenal. Kind of felt like he was just trying to get in the way more than to get on the end of a ball. Stand there and make a nuisance of yourself. That's right. He, he, He's got a decent frame on him. I think he, he's difficult to at least get around or see by. Can't be long left, I wouldn't think. Chattanooga with a free kick. Brett Jones over there. Boy, is he had a second half. They've done really well, Chattanooga. They've trailed twice, and they have really showed their class, especially in the second half. And that's all for the regular season. Great effort from Michigan Stars playing without most of their regular starting 11 from the start of the match. They get goals from Nemanja Vazdic and Anthony Bowie, but too much Chattanooga in the end. Equalizer in the first half for Marcus Nagelstad and two 19 minutes apart from Brett Jones to win it for Chattanooga. Let's try and avoid pushing and shoving guys right at the end of the season. And it's been a really good season for these two teams. Chattanooga, the number one seed going into the playoffs and Michigan Stars, the three seed, they host next Friday against Syracuse Pulse. And now that the regular season has been set to one side, we can talk tournament a little bit. Syracuse Pulse had a pretty darn good second half of the regular season. The Stars are gonna be in for a real test next Friday night. Yeah, and it's tournament time, right? Everything changes. I mean, yes, you're limiting who's in it, but the people are still in it. Now they've got their chance to try to get through it. And you know, the Stars got I think more than likely what they want out of this game, right? Got a lot of guys some run. It looks like no injuries, so you can go, keep going forward. Maybe got a couple more things solved, a couple more answers for them about some guys. So you imagine they got what they needed out of this game, and they're off to the next. Chattanooga, the same thing. Chattanooga's only disappointment is probably, hey, if we came to the strong lineup, we would have liked to jump on this game, and they certainly didn't. They absorbed it in this game instead of 